Hello there, friends! <laughs> Hopefully you're excited today because we're gonna start the modern JavaScript series. So I know I've been waiting a bit on this, a month or so, and I've kept thinking like, how am I gonna do this JavaScript series? And I decided to do it fully modern, so we're gonna use everything modern. You don't have to know anything about if you have never done programming before, this is a great way to start. And if you know programming, I'm going to kind of go over all the modern things and the modern ways on you can write JavaScript. So that's how I'm going to do it. And um, I'm going to break it down into, I'm going to release three parts every one or two days. So rather than releasing a video and then you have to wait for it for uh, three moons and three suns to pass by, we're going to release three parts so you can practice on them, you can work on them a bit, and then I'm going to release three or more four-part uh, videos. So I'm going to give it in, in chunks so you are not bored. <laughs> okay, so JavaScript, what can we use JavaScript for? Well, we can, these days you can use it almost everywhere. We can use it on in web development, so we can use it on front end to add interactivity, which is probably most what most people want to start with. Um, so adding interactivity to your elements on your HTML page, adding styles, changing dynamic content, things like that. But we can also use it on the back end, so to do authentication and uh, server side related things. So we have Node.js for that, which we're going to cover hopefully in a later tutorial. So yeah, we also have, oh, we, we can do game development with uh, JavaScript. We can use desktop uh, applications with electrons. There's a ton of things, but again, probably what most people want to start with is um, web development. So front end um, JavaScript. So that's what we're going to kind of cover. But if you learn JavaScript, uh, you're going to be able to apply it almost everywhere. So let's get started. I'm rambling too much. So Ed, what do we use? Well, we're going to use Visual Studio Code as our text editor. And the reason why I use this is because it's simple. The UI is simple. It's super fast. There are some very cool extensions that we can use to help us into making our lives super, super, super easy. So you can download it here. It's available on everything you want, even on a potato, even on Linux, even on Mac. So click on this and you're going to be presented with this screen. So what do we do from here? Well, you can go up to file and open folder and you can just create a new folder here and then open it up. And I named my modern JavaScript series. You can name yours potato series or whatever you, whatever floats your boat. And what I'm going to do is just create a, a simple HTML. We're not going to work with HTML, but I just kind of want to show you how you can get started and linking and all the other good stuff. So we're going to create one index.html like so. Hit enter. And right here, uh, what we can do is we can uh, write shift and um, one. If we hold shift and one, we're going to get the exclamation. And when we hit tab, it's going to generate and it's going to make our lives super easy. So a simple template. All right. How do we link our JavaScript and why do we link it the way that I'm going to show you? Well, you're probably used to, if you want to add a style sheet or something, you're going to link it up here like so, right? You're probably going to write style.css or if you want to add bootstrap or any other things, you're probably going to do it up here. But in JavaScript, we have to link our script tag. So this, uh, uh, we have to write script here. We're going to have to write it down here. And the reason why we do that is well, what do we do with JavaScript on on the front end? We usually manipulate uh, our elements. We we make our elements interactive, and the way to do that is we're gonna have to get the elements from up here. So if because remember our our page flows down like so, so it's gonna go from up here. It's gonna read our style sheet. It's gonna read our elements, and then it's gonna end up on our script. So if we do it up here, if we link our JavaScript up here, and let's say we are selecting in JavaScript an element, so like an image or something, it's going to give us an error message and it's going to be like, hey, there is no image. Well, there is no image because we linked it up here and it hasn't loaded our body yet. 
So that's why we do it right below everything we write. So how do we link? Well, we need to create a, a another file, which I'm going to call app.js, OK? Hit Enter. You can name it whatever you want. I like app.js. It looks fancier, even though we're going to create not much today, but <laughs> hey, it looks cool. So we're going to write script. And we're going to hit Tab, which is going to create the script tag. And now we can write JavaScript here if we want, but a better alternative is to separate things. Oh, what am I, why am I writing Z? There we go. So that's why we created this file. So here we can write source like so, and we can just link our app.js. So now easily we can just write everything here and it's not gonna be a full on mumbo jumbo here. We don't have to worry about HTML and CSS because we're practically practically doing the same with style sheets, right? We can write style uh, like so here and then write it in line, but we don't do that just to keep keep everything simple. So this is all we need right, ha right now. We can close this. We're not going to be going back to this until we do some DOM manipulation. Manipulation. Oh my God, I'm Russian today. I swear to God. Okay, so here, I actually want to show you a few extensions that I have that's going to make, make life easier. So we can go to extensions here. And the two ones that are really good that I want you to get is, well, first of all, you can write and search it up here. But if you search for something called Prettier, uh, this one, you can click on it and you can download it here. Mine says disable because I already have it, which is going to work actually in your HTML, your JavaScript everywhere. So what it does, it basically on save, it's going to make your code look pretty. So if we have a div here, h1, let's just copy this h1 and add some tabs in here. So when we hit save, it's going to make everything nicely tabbed. So this is going to obviously help in JavaScript as well a lot. It's going to format your code. You're going to see what looks nice and how you should write your code. So after you install that, uh, if it doesn't work when you hit control save, you can go down here to uh, this button down here and you can go to settings, I believe. Yep. And you can search up here for something called editor dot format save on save like so and you can click this edit icon and you can set it to true so every time you hit control save now it's going to format everything nicely and another thing that we're going to use is something called live server so what this is going to do is basically every time we hit control save it's going to refresh our html our javascript and everything and we're going to see our changes live. So we don't have to refresh manually in Chrome. So live server, I believe it's this one. Yep. So if you write live server, hit install. And when we go here, we can just right click and open with live server. Nice. And here, the only thing that we need to visualize without actually having any content on the screen is hit. if you hit F12, you're going to get this console. So here um, we can write some things in JavaScript and we can visualize everything. So F12, we get the console. And for the first example, we're going to write here in our JavaScript something called console. So this, right, the console. And if we write dot log, and then we open parentheses like so. And if we add quotes, we can say, hey, David. And then at the end, we're going to close it like so. So with the dot and the comma, I'm going to explain this in the next tutorial, why we do all of this when we get to variables and data types. But for now, we're going to hit save. As you can see, it autocorrects it. So here, you can also use simple quotes or double quotes. And when we go back here in Chrome, you're going to see, hey, David. So there we go. We we have a good start here. So we managed to, to add something here to the console. 
All right, so that's part one. And the next part, we're going to get into more exciting stuff like uh, variables, data types, and what you can do with them and why we need to use them. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.